So if you've been in Fairlight before, you're looking around the interface there and you see this little button called ADR at the top of the screen there, right? You're like, what is ADR? I don't even know what that is. Well, it stands for Automatic Dialogue Replacement. And this video, we're gonna show you how that tool works, how you can use it, how it can pop the words on the screen for you and how it can help you replace dialogue that eh, maybe you messed up on or maybe didn't come out so good and you need to re-record it. So what you're gonna see now is a little excerpt from a longer video where we talked about audio description, voiceovers, as well as the ADR tool, because voiceovers and ADR tool, they kind of go hand in hand and go together. So if you're interested in the voiceover video, I'll link to that up here. You wanna learn about all three of these topics together, I'll also put a link to that video up over here as well. But in this video, we're just talking about the ADR tool. I'm gonna break it down, show you the window, how it works. We're gonna try out a few samples. And by the end of this video, you should be knowing how to use the ADR tool. So with that said, let's jump into Resolve and check it out. So let's move ahead here. We're gonna talk about the automated dialogue replacement tool. Now this is a tool here in Resolve that's super handy. It's helpful. It can help you re-record portions of your voiceover. Let's say there's a part that you don't like and you decided you wanna put something else in there. Well, how can we do that? Now you can just record onto a new track, but we can also use the automated dialogue replacement tool here to help show you the words, tell you when to come in and just guide you through that new voiceover that you wanna put in a particular spot on your timeline or you know in your video. So let's get into checking this out. I'm gonna explain what it is, how it works, and then uh, we'll give it a try. And one of the cool things here is you can do this multiple times and it's gonna keep all these different takes for you. And then you can just pick the one that worked out the best. So, all right, let's check this out. So we are in Fairlight here. And in order to get to the automated dialogue replacement tool, look along the top here and we have ADR right here with our microphone. So go ahead and click on that. Now this is the ADR automated dialogue replacement window. Let's just run over this window real quick. I'm gonna explain what some of these things are and how to use it. And then we're gonna go ahead and give it a try. And I think this is something that anybody who is uh, working on audio description projects, I think this would come in really handy for you. So we've got three different sections here. We have list, record, and setup. So let's start with the setup section here. So that way we can set everything up and then we can just go ahead and put in our cues on where we wanna record new dialogue. So I'm in the setup section here. We have record and playback setup at the top. And the first section here is pre-roll. So what is pre-roll? That is how long is the video gonna play before it starts recording or before you are supposed to come in and add in your new dialogue. So in this case, I have four seconds and that works out fine. Then we have post-roll. So post-roll says how long should it go after, you know, the recording is done. So maybe, you know, you're recording, whatever you're saying takes a little bit longer than you expected. So how long is it gonna keep going? In this case, I put two seconds. Next we have record source. So where are you recording from? I have a microphone right here. So you wanna click this drop down and make sure that you've got your microphone selected. Record track. Now, what track do you wanna record on? So I wanna to record to my voiceover track. And the cool thing about this tool is that it's gonna put any new recordings on another layer inside that same track. And we're gonna be able to take a look at those different layers and pick whatever take that we want. Cause we can try this a couple times and then just pick the best one. So I want it to record onto my voiceover track. So you can click that drop down and click the track that you want to use. Now the guide track next, you can use that if you want to. You're probably not going to need it, but you can choose a track that's going to guide you as far as when to come in and what's happening in your video clip. So you can try it out and see if it works for you. You may not need it. It depends on your project. And you can change the record file name here if you want, or you can just leave it as the default. It's up to you what you want to do with that. Now down here, we've got different character setups. So if, you know, say there's three different people, they're all working on the audio description for a project, you can save specific settings for specific people if that's helpful. So I'm gonna add in a new one and just uh, put one in for me here. So I'm gonna call it J, hit enter. Now, anything that I change in here, it's gonna be for me and when I'm doing the voiceover work here. So maybe I wanna see things a certain way or whatever it is, then we can set it up for each individual person. Moving down here, if you click on any one of these, it's gonna open up and these are different options. You can have it beep to an in point. So when you're gonna come in, it can beep. So I'm gonna turn that off because uh, I don't need that right now can beep when you're supposed to come in, like right at the point when the actual recording starts. I'll leave that one on. And again, if you click on any one of these, it's gonna have more options in there for you. You can use the count in. So how many seconds do you want to be counted in? So you're gonna see on the screen, you know, what are five, four, three, two, one, or what, however many you pick. In this case, I've got three. So it'll give me three second count in so I know when to get ready to come in for my voiceover. The video streamer here, this is gonna give you uh, lines that come across the screen. 
that's going to help just guide you on when to come in for your particular clip. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those on. And you can change the color there if you want. The next one here, on-screen Q-Text style. So what this is going to do is allow you to put the text on the screen and have it come up when you should start talking. So you've got different options here on how you can have that look. You can try it out if you want. You can do a sample text here just to see what it's going to look like. And it comes in handy to kind of tweak this a little bit. And I'll show you how to add the text in so it pops up on the screen in a second here. So to just to close any of these, just double click on them. You've got smart timeline here. This is going to allow either the playhead to move across the screen or the playhead's going to stay still while the timeline moves across the screen. Just depends on how you want to view it. I'm going to leave that off. And then mixing control, you're not going to need that. So don't worry about it for now. So that is the setup. Now let's go to the, the list section. Now, if you have uh, you know, a program where you can write up a whole bunch of cues, I know there's files where you can make a whole cue list and what to say and all that. That's a little out of my wheelhouse. I know you can do it and then just import all that right here into Resolve. But if you don't have that, which I don't, uh, we're just going to make some cues on our own as far as where we should come in and where we want to make our voiceovers. So let's uh, make a new cue here. So in order to make a cue, we need to select an area on our timeline where we want to record. There's a few ways you can do that. You can use in and out points. So let's say I wanted to replace this clip right here. I can come to the beginning of the clip. I can press I for in and then come to the end of the clip and press O for out. That'll set that. Let me show you another way. I'm just going to clear these marks here. I'm going to clear my in and out. Now I can use this tool right here, which is the range selection mode. And I can just click on my one clip and it's going to highlight that clip for me. So now that that clip is highlighted, I can come back in my list over here and I just want to say create new queue. So I'm just going to go ahead and click new queue. Now we can see right here, let's see if I make this just a little bit bigger here. It's got, this is queue number one. It's the first one that I made. It's got a character here, which it doesn't have anything there just yet. And then it's got dialogue, which it doesn't say anything yet. We're going to add that in. And then it's got the time in and out where this is going to be placed in our timeline. And it tells you how long the clip is going to be. So if I select my clip here, I can actually come up to character and this is going to be Jay. This is going to be me. So I'm going to click on that. This tells me my character. Now for the dialogue that I might want to add in, I'm just going to click on the dialogue here. Now I can type it in right up here. All right. So let's say I wanted to say this, riding a red bike down a dirt road, a woman comes towards you. So that's what I want to say. So now that we have this cue set up, it's going to show me those words on the screen. So let's head over to the record tab here. I'm going to click on that. And now you can see it's right here, right? We see it on our screen. And if it's even easier, you can pop this screen out by hitting this little window right here, right? Let's bring this up here, make it a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. So we can see the text doesn't quite fit on our screen here. So let's go fix that real quick so we can actually see all of what we want to say. So I'm going to jump back into my list here. I'm going to select my queue that we're working on, come back up here on the top, and I'm just going to put a return in here. Okay, and then come back to the record and just select my clip again. And now you can see the text is right here and we can see it on the screen. So now we're all set up. We can replace this dialogue with a new dialogue that we're going to record. So you've got some buttons up here in the record menu. So you want to se first select whatever cue you're working on, assuming you're going to have a couple because you can set up a whole bunch of cues before you even get started recording just so that everything is organized and set up. You're good to go. You can just start recording. So before we start recording our voiceover, there's one other setting I want you to turn on, and that is audio track layers, because all of these new recordings we're going to do are going to be put in different layers on the same track, and we want to be able to see them. So come on up to your view menu, and then come all the way down here and choose show audio track layers. Now, if I turn mine off, you'll see my, my layers get big again. And if I turn it back on... Now you can see we've got more space up there and that's going to show us our layers for the recordings that we're about to make. So let's pick a clip that we're going to redo here using the ADR panel. So I want to redo uh, this clip right here. So let's hear what it says and then we're going to come up with some new wording that we want to use in place of it. So let's listen to this real quick. A woman's riding her bike next to a farm field on a dirt road. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is select our range. Where do we want this new dialogue to go? And the fastest way to do it is using this little guy right here. This is the range selection mode. So go ahead and click on that. And all we have to do is click on the clip. Now, if you have a big long clip, you're going to want to use or set in and out points using the letter I and the letter O on your keyboard. And that's what you can see up here on the screen. These little points right here, that's the in and the out point. So when you go somewhere and you press I, it's going to set the first point. 
O is going to set the second point. Once you have the range selected that you want to use for the new dialog, we want to come over here and uh, in our list view right here, we're going to go ahead and click new queue. Now in here, if you have a character set up, you can uh, select that. It'll be right here in a drop down. I did set up mine, but then I got rid of it because I was having some issues. So now I'm just going with, uh, with no character. So I'm going to come over here to the dialogue section, click in there. And then I'm going to click up in the top area here, and I'm going to put in some new text of what I actually want to say now. Okay, so what I want to say is this. A woman is riding her red bike down a dirt road next to a cornfield. That's what I want to say. So once you do that, you can just click down here in the open area. It's going to unselect your, uh, your queue here that we just created. So I want to go back over into the record tab now jump over in here and we want to go ahead and select the queue that we want to work with. Now you may have a whole ton of them in this case, I just have one. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And you notice that uh, it's kind of not appearing on the screen the right way. That's okay for the moment. Let's just test it out and see if it's going to work here. So we have this button right here, rehearse. I'm going to go ahead and hit that and see how it works. So you can see our count in over here on our screen. And you could see that our text was highlighted. It had a little progress bar that came across the screen. It's going to tell us how much time is left in our queue that we made. So now I'm going to unselect that. Let's jump back into the list view here. I'm going to select my uh, text here again, and I'm just going to put a return in here so that way I can see it all on screen. Now, you would think Resolve would do this for you. Maybe it does. I haven't played with it a whole ton. So I'm just going to hit enter here, and that should work out just fine. So now when I click on the text again down here, we can see in our little window it appears just fine. So once you have that set, let's jump over back into the record tab here. And I'm going to pop out my screen just so it's a little bit bigger so I can read the words. I'm going to select my cue that I want to go through and work with here. And you can rehearse it a few times if you want. I'm just going to go for it. We're just going to hit record here and see what happens. So uh, let's go for it. A woman is riding her red bike down a dirt road next to a cornfield. So now you can see once I did that up here, I have my take and you can do as many takes as you want and it'll layer it in the same audio track. So one of the things that you can do is just try it a bunch of times, see how it works out. I'm going to try it a few more times here and we'll get a couple more tracks here and then I'll show you how you can listen to each one of your takes. All right. So I got two takes. Now, if I want to listen to it and see how they sound. I'm going to actually turn off the R right here. So my track is no longer armed because in my headphones, I was hearing an echo from here anyway. So I'm going to turn that off and you are going to hear whichever track is the highest, whichever one's at the top. So in this case, this one right here is at the top. I'll just put this guy back. Use my little arrow tool here. This one, this one is at the top. So that's the one you're going to hear when we play through. So let's listen and see how that sounds. A woman is riding her red bike down a dirt road next to a cornfield. Okay, so now you can see if I grab the original and bring that one up to the top, now we'll hear the original. Riding her bike next to a farm field on a dirt road. So whichever one you drag and move to the top is going to be the one that you hear. Now, if you're having trouble seeing the layers and where the things are recorded, check this out and check these settings. You want to make sure that you've got these uh, checked on properly here. So timeline down to layered audio editing. Make sure that that is checked on. And then you want to come over to the view and you want to come down to show audio track layers. So that way you're going to be able to edit those layers. You can see those layers and you should be good to go. So when you have your different takes, you can come in here and select the one you want and rate them by stars. Maybe you've got, you know, five or six takes, different ways of saying things. You want to see what different ones sound like. You can go ahead and just select the one that you like. You can highlight it with the stars here. And down in your timeline, just make sure whichever clip that you want to use is the one that appears on the top right up here. So let's say I'm happy with this take. I went through, I did all of my uh, ADR recording, the dialogue replacement, anywhere I want to replace. Well, now I can come back to my view and I can turn off the audio track layers. And now I'm just going to see that last one that was on the top. So if we play through it. That's what we should hear. A woman is riding her red bike down a dirt road next to a cornfield. Now it is a little fast. So obviously that's probably not the best way to, you know, handle that particular clip. But once we have it recorded here and you get what you like, you can just grab it and move it around if you want. But you're going to see, we do see it underneath here. We see another clip under there. So you may have to go back into your track layer view and kind of play around with them a little bit. You know, maybe you want to move them all at once, or maybe you just want to get rid of the other ones that you don't need. Maybe you want to take the good one and drop it onto another track. So then you can just mute these other two or something like that. 
It's up to you. There's a lot of ways to do it. You got to play with it, find out what works best for you. But that's how you use the ADR tool here in DaVinci Resolve. It's super handy and can really just help when you've got to replace dialogue in a video clip that you've already made. Maybe you want to change the wording. You can see it on the screen here. It gives you the countdown. And it's just a really handy tool that can help out a lot while you're working on your audio description project. So ADR is there. Use it if you need it. Try it out. Let me know what you think. Comment below if you have any troubles or any problems. And I'll try and help you out the best that I can with all that ADR stuff. Now, once you have all your audio recorded and everything's in there, you got your wording, your audio description, you're good to go. Your voiceover work is done. The next step that I would do is go through and start working on some audio processing. So there's a lot of things here that I'm not going to go through everything in this video, but I will link them either in the description or I'll pin a comment where I'm going to link a whole bunch of different videos where you can learn how to set your levels. You want to have good levels on your audio clips so that people can hear it, right? So you want to set your audio levels to about minus 10 dB. So that way you've got good signals coming in. Everybody can hear it good and it's not too loud, not too quiet. It's just right. And I'll leave a link for a video that teaches you how to set your levels here in DaVinci Resolve. That'll be helpful if you don't know how to do it. And then once you've got your level set, you want to look at some other things. You know, you want to look at using the EQ a little bit. I have a whole EQ crash course that can help you out. And it's not too hard once you get the hang of it. And a little bit of EQ work can really go a long way and do a great job as far as helping your audio sound better, right? Because we all have different microphones in different situations, different environments. And sometimes you're going to get harsh sounds in there that just don't sound good. You want to clean it up a little bit. And EQ is one of those tools that can really help clean up your audio and get rid of some of those harsh sounds. Another thing you might want to look into using is a little bit of compression and some dynamics. And I have a video on that I'll link to as well. Dynamics can really help just bring your sound together, make it sound better. It can, you know, reduce some of your peaks and boost up some of your low end stuff. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do there with your dynamics. You can help reduce some background noise using an expander or a gate. And I'll link to that video. You can check that out if uh, that's something that you're interested in. But a lot of these things are going to make small changes that over time are going to really improve the sound of your audio, right? Because if we're watching movies or TV or plays or whatever it might be, and the audio description that's in there, if it doesn't sound good, it's going to be hard to watch. And for those that are just able to listen and can't actually see anything, if the audio doesn't sound good, I mean, it's it's just hard to sit through, right? We've probably all watched videos where the video looks awesome, but the audio is terrible. And it's hard to sit there and listen to it and, and watch that. So you got to keep that in mind. You want your audio to sound good, not only from the perspective of your audio description and being able to get the details in there that you want so the viewer can understand what's going on, but just the quality of your audio. It's super important that it sounds good. It's clear. It's crisp. It's easy to understand. And doing a little bit of post-processing on your audio is going to really help make a big difference for the listener at the end of the day. So that is the ADR Automatic Dialogue Replacement Tool here in DaVinci Resolve. Comes in real handy if you got to re-record certain parts of your video. You need to add in a little voiceover or something like that. It can really help you lay everything out. So then you just have to cruise through your video and re-record any of the parts that you need to redo. If you have any questions on the ADR tool, definitely leave a comment down below. And if you learned uh, just a little something in this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're working towards 50K here. Hopefully we get there before the end of the year. We'll see. But if you haven't subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button. And with that said, guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace.